Hey guys, what's up? My name is Midnight Strike 3625 and I know it's been a really long time since I posted a video last and for that I do apologize, but things like work, school, and just kind of life in general get in the way of things sometimes. I actually do have something very special planned today. It is my third overall double review and today we're actually going to be talking about Bon Jovi's New Jersey and Keep the Faith. Ironically, these two albums come right after Slippery When Wet, which I actually reviewed last February as a classic in my first wave. So, moving on, this is not going to be a current, you know, discography, if that. So, I actually just wanted to review both of these albums, and it really wouldn't make much sense to devote two separate reviews to the same band in the same series or in the same same wave moreover of classic reviews so basically I'm just gonna do a double review much like I did with Skid Row's debut and Slave to the Grind so getting into it um, the band Bon Jovi wanted to prove to the world that Slippery When Wet their all-time biggest top-selling album at that point was not just a fluke and beginner's luck it wasn't they weren't a one-trick pony or steel horse one-trick steel horse if you will they wanted to prove to the world that they were worth a lot more than just a few, you know, living on a prayers and you give love a bad name. So they made this album right here, New Jersey. Pretty much number one had such hits as Lay Your Hands On Me, Bad Medicine, Born To Be My Baby, um, Blood On Blood, Homebound Train, and I'll Be There For You, albeit that song I don't really like as much, but I can definitely see the appeal that it holds to a certain audience. So getting into the actual album itself though, um, New Jersey is filled with tons of different, um, influences, and it kind of lacks consistency. That's my main gripe with it. While I do absolutely adore this album, I got it when I was, like, 15 years old, a few of the songs kind of stand out as being kind of, like, misplaced. And those songs are, of course, Love for Sale, Ride Cowboy Ride, and, uh, you know, to a minor extent, Homebound Train and Wild as the Wind. Those songs just don't really feel like they fit anywhere. Oh, and of course, uh, Stick to Your Guns. That one doesn't really feel like it fits either. Um, Love for Sale is the closer, and the band actually recorded that while drunk at a party, so I don't know how it really fits here. And I'll Be There For You, it definitely fits with the rest of the album, like Lay Your Hands On Me, Bad Medicine, um, Born To Be My Baby, like those kind of songs, Living In Sin, but... I don't know, aside from the intro, which is really catchy, I really love that intro, I just kind of, you know, lost my interest halfway through the song. I didn't really find it appealing that much, but I can definitely, like I said, see how people could find it appealing in that aspect to a wider audience. So, my favorite song of all time by Bon Jovi has to be hands down either You Give All the Bad Name off my favorite album, Slippery When Wet, or this album, Born To Be My Baby. So, Born To Be My Baby is one of their most anthemic songs, arena rock, grand scale, that they've ever produced. It's probably one of, uh, one of their most anthemic, like I said, and it's just awesome. Great lyrics, um, awesome use of production, great distortion, and great use of effects. It doesn't really drudge on too much like Lay Your Hands On Me did a little bit in the intro. So that one is definitely a highlight of this entire album. Lay Your Hands On Me, another highlight, but the intro does drag on for far too long, um, especially when you're just listening to it for the first time. I kind of just lost interest in it. I didn't really listen to it. I kind of brushed it off as filler until about a couple of years ago when I actually listened to the entire track and just kept trying to listen to everything just over and over again. And once I got the uh, the feel for the actual rhythm, I actually absolutely could not get enough of it. So here's to say, you know, it's maybe not too long for, you know, hardcore fans of the band, but for people just getting into it, it does kind of drudge on for a little bit. Um, Bad Medicine, another one, really love the intro, awesome dynamic guitars, John Bon Jovi's voice is of course brilliant as always, and one of my favorite songs, Born To Be My Baby, I already touched on, this is my favorite song, tied with You Give Love A Bad Name. I can't really decide between the two. So, Living In Sin, this is another, um, another one, it's about a couple that secretly wants to elope. Basically saying, you know, I don't need your dad's approval. I want to go out and I want to, we want to get married. So we're going to get eloped. Basically, that's the gist of the song. I really like how atmospheric it is. It really puts you in that mood. It definitely has a lot of empathy going for it. Like you, you can actually put yourself in what uh, John Bon Jovi is talking about here. So 
into the main characters, if you will. So it is very atmospheric in that aspect. The next one is Blood on Blood, also another one, basically a coming of age story about becoming a man and uh, joining a long haired rock and roll band. It's an awesome song, I really like it. Awesome intro, of course this is an album for awesome intros. Um, the next one, Homebound Train. This one is really bluesy, it kind of actually does sound like something off of Skid Row's debut, which would actually occur one year later. I don't know, I didn't really like it to start, but when I, once I listened to it again, actually I listened to it a couple nights ago, I absolutely could not get enough of it, I love it. Um, Wild is the Wind, this is another one where it's like, it's, it's okay, but it's not really my favorite. It's a slower song, and it is more atmospheric, so it does do a lot to set the mood apart from all the other ones, but it doesn't really fit with the rest of the album, or with the rest of the album, with the rest of the songs, if you will. So, um, Ride Cowboy Ride, this is an intro to Stick to Your Guns. This is one where it sounds like it was off of a record player, but John Bon Jovi definitely has that rasp in his voice, that grit that you would definitely see on future releases, but the song itself is just kind of, eh. I mean, I actually like it, but it's kind of not really fitting with the rest of the album. It doesn't really have the same themes, it doesn't carry the same tones or the same lyricism, and it just, it would have been good on an EP, it's a good intro, it's a good song, but just not for this album. Stick to Your Guns, kind of the same story, my least favorite song on the album, it's just kind of filler, it's kind of meh, I don't really like it that much. I'll Be There For You, I've already detailed on this, I actually really absolutely love the intro. But then once it gets past that, it just kind of seems a little bit contrived and cliche for my ears. So, But I definitely do respect Bon Jovi for making this song, and it is a very well-crafted song, just not for me, really. So Love for Sale and uh, 99 in the Shade. 99 in the Shade basically puts you on a vacation. It makes you feel like you are just living large, out on a beach somewhere, drinking a margarita, just feeling great about yourself. It's a very upbeat song and has a lot of distortion and echoing effects. I really love that. And uh, Love for Sale, this is one where they recorded it drunk and, I mean, definitely, you know, it's an acquired taste. I actually just started getting used to it a little bit ago when I revisited this album for this specific review. However, when I actually first listened to this album when I bought it, I couldn't stand it. I don't really think it's the greatest way to close off the album either. So with that in mind, the final verdict for this album is going to be an 8.5 out of 10. It is one of their best, however, it's not up there with the likes of Slippery One Wet. And in my opinion, the next album that we're going to be looking at, Keep the Faith. It is, however, in my top three. So Slippery One Wet, Keep the Faith, and New Jersey. So we'll get into that by saying this is the album that pretty much had Bon Jovi burn out. They were touring and going all over the place, concerts, tours, um, sold out stadiums, pretty much everything. They were going all out and they burned themselves out after like a year or two. I mean, they were running constantly back and forth, flying all over the place, performing their asses off. It was just unbelievable. It was nuts. I mean, they were a popular number one band back then. And this album is pretty much what rose them to that point. This combined with the turbulence of Slippery When Wet. So with that in mind, of course, they were burned out and they went their separate ways after they started fighting and the band continuously, the, the ties began to unravel a little bit and eventually they went their own separate ways. In this period, they, they each produced their own things. Richie produced an album, um... I'm not sure if like Alec John Such or anyone else did, um, but I know that John Bon Jovi actually wrote the soundtrack for a video called Young Guns 2, which actually had a few decent gems on it. Moreover, the uh, title track is probably my favorite song on that one, of course, Blaze of Glory. So it had a few other good songs on there, but none as prominent as Blaze of Glory. This album, while not an official Bon Jovi album, was actually remastered along with Sam Bora's effort. So with the rest of the band's material, like Slippery When Wet and New Jersey and all those ones. So getting into their return though, finally they decided to mend their ways and join up once again to create another amazing album, <laughs> Keep the Faith, right here. This one is probably my second favorite album. And this is because they didn't necessarily go back to their glam roots in this one. They wanted to go 
out of their way to make something different, something that would stand out, something that wasn't necessarily grunge, but wasn't necessarily very, you know, pop-oriented rock and the arena ballady type things that they were used to. This, however, they marked a new chapter in Bon Jovi's history, or at least that's what they say. I kind of disagree. I think that this kind of continued a lot of the trends that were found on New Jersey, albeit in a more simplistic and straightforward format along with a little bit of a blues influence and some hard rock grooves. So, you know, with that, though, I mean, these days kind of signified a new chapter in Bon Jovi's career. So that's my own opinion. These days is kind of the breaking point where they kind of went off in a more commercial and radio rockish oriented groove, which I personally don't really like. I think they sold out after Alec John Such got fired, but that's just me. With Keep the Faith, though, this has a lot of great material on it. I actually think this is Bon Jovi's most underrated album. And when I actually wanted to review these things, I could not decide between these two. At first, I wanted to review Keep the Faith. Then I said, you know, I really want to review New Jersey. Why not review both of them? So when you get into it, you have a lot of similar aspects to uh, Keep the Faith and New Jersey. So Keep the Faith has a lot of similarities between itself and New Jersey, Slippery When Wet, and of course the uh, title, the self-titled album. So when you get down to it, a lot of the similar aspects are right there, especially in songs such as I Believe and uh, Keep the Faith and of course Fear and If I Was Your Mother. You got the glam hooks, you got the arena kind of grand scale sound and a little bit of more bluesy influence and a lot of funk actually, especially in the title track. So to begin, I believe this one is more of a kind of an inspirational song. It's got those synthesizers in there and it's got, you know, really uplifting lyrics and I do quite enjoy it. Um, Keep the Faith, the title track. This one's a little bit more frantic. It's kind of all over the place. It's got a really catchy beat to it and great lyrics, um, great singing by John Bon Jovi, and actually I really like the drums in this one as well and how they utilize just the echoing effects in the beginning. There's not as much distortion as there was on New Jersey, however, but it's still prevalent on this song. So, I'll Sleep When I'm Dead marks a drastic turn for the album, and it's more of a hard rock mixed with a blues kind of oriented um, drive. It's more guitar oriented, much like in the vein of Appetite for Destruction, Guns N' Roses, kind of like that. I don't know. It, I also notice a little bit of southern twang in there, but it's not too overly influenced on this song. Um, the lyrics are a bit cliche, but, you know, it's kind of like that, you know, rock and roll lifestyle kind of thing. I really like it. I'll sleep when I'm dead. One of my favorites off of this album. In These Arms, this is another one where it's kind of like living in sin, kind of um, walking in those footsteps. Living in sin, never say goodbye, kind of like the ballady type track. And it actually does it quite well. It's very, very catchy. Um, Bed of Roses, this is one of their most popular songs. I can't get into it for some reason. I don't know why. It seems like, you know, I'll be there for you and Bed of Roses, two of their most popular songs, yet I can't really get into for the life of me. I can see why I'll be there for you is popular, but I can't really see why Bed of Roses is. I mean, yeah, it has good lyrics and everything, but the structure is just kind of a little repetitive and it just, it really reminds me a little bit of Don't Cry by Guns N' Roses, but in a slower and more monotonous format. Not knocking the song structure and the lyrics, but, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. If I Was Your Mother, another kind of thrashy, actually, song. Thrash mixed with glam a little bit. It's not necessarily just too over, overly prevalent in the metal genre, however, but it is very heavy. It's very hard, very hard-hitting, and has a few solos in there. I actually really like it. Um, but um, the song structure itself is its definite selling point. Um, Dry County, this is probably my favorite song on here. It's got a bitchin' solo, awesome lyrics, and this is probably the most serious song that Bon Jovi has ever written, or at least one of them. With 9 minutes and 50 seconds long, this is the longest track they have ever recorded, and it definitely shows. It's an awesome addition to an awesome album, to an awesome discography. So... Basically, this is my favorite. I really like the uh, influence of, or the addition of the piano ballads in there. It's got some piano sections, it's got some guitars, it's got some awesome leads, and just an awesome structure overall. Um, Woman in Love, this one's really catchy. 
I really like it. Um, just not really one of the uh, the best songs on the album, but it's not necessarily filler, if that makes sense. Fear, this one actually stands out because it's one of the more glamish songs, and it kind of takes its roots from, say, Slippery When Wet era Bon Jovi, or, I mean, even hell, 7800 Degrees Fahrenheit, some of the better songs on that album. Um, Fear, it also has an awesome bass line, opening bass line. That's probably one of my favorite parts. That and the chorus, and the vocals are just spot on in that song. Um, I Want You, eh, kind of a filler track. I don't really like it. I mean, it's a little bit slower. It's more straightforward, and it's, you know, not really, act actually, I guess it's not really slower. It's more mid-tempo, but I don't know. I just couldn't really get into it. Blame It on the Love of Rock and Roll and Little Bit of Soul. These are the most bluesy songs on the album. Just pure, straight-up hard rock. Absolutely love it. Little Bit of Soul was actually so good. I actually had a graduation slideshow back in 2011 when I graduated high school, and that was the closing song. I absolutely love the riff in that. It's just... It's awesome, and just the way that Bon Jovi sings it. So, overall, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. Awesome addition to an awesome discography, like I said. And it's definitely not a new chapter, but it definitely does explore some new grounds, some new territory. And it's definitely a breath of fresh air after being, you know, introduced to the same thing over and over again with Slippery When Wet and 7800 Degrees Fahrenheit, New Jersey, and the self-titled, albeit not in that order. So... You know, it definitely is a f breath of fresh air, for that matter. So, final verdict is 8.5 out of 10 and 9 out of 10. Awesome albums. Go pick them up somewhere because it's an awesome discography, especially the first five albums are probably my favorite, but I don't, I'm not really too big of a fan of 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I guess, you know, Slippery When Wet and uh, New Jersey and, and, of course, Keep the Faith are my favorites. So... With that, thank you very much for watching. This is Midnight Strike 3625. Keep calm and rock on.